I grew up as the oldest of three children in a military family. My father was enlisted in the Air Force during the Vietnam and Korean Wars and served 20 years before he retired. We moved so much as children that when I look at my school pictures, I have difficulty identifying what grade I was in or where we actually lived at the time. So I sort of guess. These were difficult times in our country, and military families with service members returning from combat received little, if any, mental health support. Alcoholism and intimate partner violence were common, and my family was no exception. I remember that my happy place as a child was always the library, and many of my closest friends were characters in books. As I was reflecting on our theme of vulnerability for this month, my childhood and my love for books came to mind. For me, as a kid, books were safe. I could enter the world of Winnie the Pooh, Pippi Longstockings, or Nancy Drew and be in a land where I could imagine living. Things always worked out, and the endings were happy. I could also have friends that traveled with me from military base to military base. I learned as a little girl that the words, will you be my friend, were amongst the most vulnerable to be uttered. After all, being friends meant either you would leave me or I would leave you. No fault of our own, just dad got orders and once again we were moving and starting over. New friends, new school, new library. I also learned don't get too close. Close hurts. I remember some friends that meant so much to me. Friends I had to say goodbye to and never saw again. Clint Ferguson. We sang dead skunk in the middle of the road in front of the entire elementary school together. And Kelly Williamson, she and I were best friends, spending our afternoons after school playing the Barbie game, imagining that we were going to grow up and marry Ken, <laughs> which never happened, at least not for me. I'm not sure about Kelly. Although I did date a man named Ken for a few years, but he did not drive a convertible. <laughs> Reading Winnie the Pooh as a nomadic military brat, I'd imagine living in a place like Hundred Acre Woods, where I would go to friends' houses and they would always be there, nestled in amongst the trees. They would answer the door if I knocked and perhaps we'd have a cup of tea together or a spot of honey. If I had a problem, they'd help me solve it. If I had tears, they'd share a hanky and help me feel better. If I lost my tail, they'd help me find it. Somehow in the Hundred Acre Woods, you could count on each other and things always worked out. I think I've spent my life trying to find my place and my people, wondering if this thing called life will work out. My spiritual journey has been no exception. You could go so far as to say, that I was wandering in the woods for much of my adult life, trying to figure it out. I was raised in a Southern Baptist church. My grandfather was actually a Methodist minister. The television in my childhood home regularly featured Jimmy Swaggart and Tim and Tammy Faye Baker, my mother a devoted follower. Leaving home in Louisiana, I left behind my religious upbringing and somehow logically wandered into the Catholic Church. And naturally, that led me to being an Episcopalian, where we baptized our son Camille. I dabbled in New Age religions for a while, and I studied Buddhism. I even converted to Judaism and kept a kosher home for 12 years during my second marriage. I was introduced to Unitarian Universalism at a church 
at the church in Studio City. I wandered into it to attend a 12-step meeting many years ago. I would go some Sundays and listen to the minister speak. It turned out it was Nika. (laughs) Or someone else. I'd sit in the back and I'd watch people interact. They were warm and friendly and loving and it felt genuine and safe. I couldn't put my finger on it, but there was just something about it. I liked it there. But it felt too scary to people back then to say, will you be my friend? A few years passed, I moved away and then I returned back to Southern California And the pandemic had my work as a psychotherapist all-consuming. And although I was with people all day long, I realized my work was isolating and I was lonely. And the people I served were my clients and not my friends. And as I was pondering what to do, the feeling I had sitting in the back of that church in Studio City came to mind. So I was delighted to find a UU church in my new neck of the woods. What was this thing anyway? Unitarian Universalism, Universalism, Unitarianism. What was this UU thing? As a Southern Baptist, we believed that we were fallen, and the only way to heaven was by accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. As a kid, I also remember no Halloween, no dancing, and being on time was very important. If you were late to church, the minister would call you out from the pulpit in front of the entire congregation. So being a Southern Baptist, I learned to be on time. (laughs) In Catholicism, we believed there was one God in the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and that we could be absolved from our sins. There, I learned to value ritual. Christmas Eve midnight mass in a Catholic church is still always beautiful to me. As an Episcopalian, we believed much the same thing, except we valued democracy. And there, I learned the value of community and service. My child went to daycare at the Episcopal church, and parents lovingly chipped in and helped out. Studying Buddhism taught me about the interconnectedness of all beings and ways to minimize unnecessary suffering. Judaism taught me to bring faith into my home. Shabbat dinner with my family on Friday nights are some of my fondest memories. All of these places, religions, and experiences have been important teachers in the fabric of my life. But it wasn't until I found Chalice that I really began to know what it means to belong, to find my place in the order of things, to know friendship as an important part of my spirituality. At Chalice, we don't have agreements so much about what we believe. We have agreements about how we want to be with each other. Agreements to strive to be our best selves and to support our world in being its best self. We are not a community of beliefs as much as we are a community of action. We have a covenant of good relations that is grounded in values and appeals to all of us to be in community with each other from the fundamentals and foundations of being good friends to each other. It opens with the words, we, the members and friends of this congregation. Those words made me realize that I came here seeking community, but what I've gotten is so much more. I've made friends. Community requires me to show up and be in the room. Friendship requires something more of me. It requires me to be vulnerable to engage, to commit, to saying, I need you, and I'm here for you, and to show up in ways that demonstrate my love and care for you and our world, and to do it over and over 
and over again. It requires me to ask, will you be my friend? And it requires me to live a values-driven life knowing that friendship involves the risk of loss. Much like Pooh and his friends, being a part of Chalice, as our covenant reminds us, is a continuous practice of opening our hearts and minds to those who have traveled journeys unlike ours and whose strengths and challenges may be different from ours. It asks us to practice deep listening and to actively create a welcoming space. It asks us to assume good intentions on each other's parts, to allow for our humanity, mine and yours, and to be forgiving and compassionate with ourselves and each other. It asks us to see the divine spark that is at the center of each of us and to value each of our unique expressions on this planet. Isn't that what Winnie the Pooh and his friends taught us as children? To allow for others to be themselves, to show up and help, to lend an ear and a helping hand, to be kind, patient, and tolerant, whether you're a bear, a piglet, a tigger, or a kangaroo? that each of us brings something special, magical, and unique, that we are better together in our own little corner of the woods than separate. And although we don't have Eeyore or Piglet or Tigger amongst us, we do have our own loving cast of characters, and each one of us matters. We all know how much we lovingly miss our own Reverend Nika, Torkel, your dancing brings smiles to our faces Sunday after Sunday. Matt, who would we be without your devil-may-care laughter or your puns to make us lovingly groan? Who would we be without Sam's talents bringing storybook characters to life and awakening childlike wonder in our hearts? Or Anthony, reminding us weekly that music and songs are portals to our souls. And let's not forget Anna, who manages our community's operational details with absolute grace. Or the innumerable volunteers that make Chalice our programs and our services happen week in and week out. Each of us matters and our love ripples out to our community in so many individual acts of care and friendship and helps us nurture spiritually courageous people who transform the world through justice and compassion. It has been you, my friends, who have brought to life the lessons of, that I learned as a child from Winnie the Pooh. I came to Chalice because I wanted a community a place I felt like I belonged, my people, if you will. But what I've gotten here is so much more. You've inspired me to have courage to ask, will you be my friends? And what I've heard is a resounding yes. And in the words of Winnie the Pooh, if you live to be 100, I hope I live to be 100 minus one day so that I never have to live a day without you. I end today with gratitude in my heart for your friendships and the hopes that friendship continues to grow and deepen and that we aspire together to make our world a friend-filled place for all. This or something greater for the highest good of all concerned. Namaste, shalom, amen, and alleluia.